Today, I am very much privileged and honored to introduce you a great scholar, author, and professor, Tom Gage. Three decades teaching, three degrees from UC Berkeley, written, co-authored, edited 29 publications, three entries in the Encyclopedia of English Language Arts, prime mover of three Humboldt State programs, and taught or lectured in China, Greece, Morocco, and Turkey. If I want to read the whole CV, then it takes my 25 minutes. So <laughs> I'm just briefly <laughs> summarize this CV. Uh, thank you for accepting my invitation, Tom. Welcome to our program. I'm delighted to be here. Three decades teaching and broad knowledge and great experience. Uh, so with your own background and experience, I would like to get your feedback and knowledge and information about uh, the Hizmet movement and Fethullah Gülen. And your insights are really important for me and for the whole audience. So how did you get to know Hizmet movement and Fethullah Gülen? That's a very interesting question. And uh, on the theme of huddle masses, let me give you a very brief prelude and then I'll get directly to the first time I came across the Hizmet Movement and Fethullah Gulen. Uh, in 1958, I was on a, a quay looking across the Straits of Gibraltar to Morocco. And I remember vividly having thoughts of huddled masses that day, wow. because only 14 years earlier, there were hundreds of thousands of Europeans, of Lutherans, of Catholics, of Jews, of secularists, of Muslims, all gathering, trying to get across to Morocco where the Islamic state of Morocco, the kingdom, welcomed them. I've never forgotten that because there were only four democracies at that time. Three were neutral and not opposed to the Nazis, whereas England was the only one in opposition. So the idea of huddled masses has been very central in my thinking. And it so happens coincidentally to be that 14 years ago today, I encountered the first uh, person from Hizmet at a conference in San Francisco. That was what has led me to participate in many, many conferences, to be a participant and to be a speaker and have enjoyed my connections. And I was honored uh, in 2012, along with a professor from the Law School of Texas University and the Philosophy Department at Texas Tech to uh, have dinner with uh, Huji Effendi. And, uh, had a very, very interesting experience. Could you uh, elaborate more about your first uh, encounter with Hoji Effendi, Fethullah Gülen, uh, a little bit more? Yes, uh, the three of us with uh, members of Hizmet as translators had participated in a meeting of the East West Institute of New York City. And it was at that occasion that, in fact, uh, Fethullah Gulen had been awarded the Award of Peace, the third time in the history of that regal organization. And as a result, we went uh, from New York City to visit uh, Fethullah Gulen, and we had dinner and uh, an evening of about three hours, uh, including questions and answers. And it was a very, very rich, rich dialogue in which uh, I found uh, Hoj Effendi a very, very interested listener who listened loudly. And he does, you know, he does not speak English. And so our words were translated to him. And I was, I was struck by, by his deliberation and focused attention. And when I said he listens loudly, I think that's a quality that I can only ascribe to a few others that I've met in my life. Uh, so uh, with your great knowledge and experience, uh, how do you envision the distinctive features of the leader of this movement, 50 years movement, uh, and lots of uh, events, activities, institutions in these 50 years, more than 150 countries, 
So how do you see Fethullah Gülen, Hoca Efendi? What are the distinctive features of Hoca Efendi for you? First of all, comparisons. Um, in 1960, the year after I returned from my uh, year abroad where I was traveling by myself, uh, I met Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, I found in King a uh, kind of uh, inspiration that, that determined where I would go in my life to become a teacher rather than an executive for an insurance company in Chicago, Kemper Insurance, as a matter of fact. Um, the next year I heard uh, President Kennedy say, do not ask what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And that was, again, a prime mover, along with meeting the, doc, uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. When I met uh, Fatula Galan, uh, I kind of heard President Kennedy's speech, not just what I, your country can do for you or the world can do for you, but in fact, what I find his meant to do in its mission of service is what can you do for the world? And that is the singular distinction that I find in uh, Fethullah Gulen and the Hizmet movement, whether it's addressing the needs of people who have suffered an earthquake and the Kim Seok Mu organization that came rapidly to the response of people, the huddling masses, trying to get to their children in wreckage outside of Istanbul. Uh, I, I find that the the schools that have been set up, uh, uh, Mehmet Kanjuju, uh, discussion of the school in Mardin, uh, just north of Syria, where I taught for a year. Um, I find that this is a remarkable achievement. I've studied that document that he wrote, how in fact the whole community, a community of mixed different ethnicities and religions coming together, uh, in, a, in an area that, that has had a lot of trouble. And then that school, it was not just the academic study, but it was an aspect of how the third space education of how, for instance, in a spring conference, the different uh, ethnic groups had, had the children doing demonstrations for the whole community. And that emphasis upon community has been central. Great. Uh... So you participated in many programs of uh, his Met movement and you visited a lot of institutions in different parts of the world, not only in the United States, but also other parts of the right. world. Yeah. So uh, to you, when you compare his Met movement with other movements, with other uh, Jamaat groups, communities, uh, what do you see the distinction, the definitive characteristics of the his Met movement? Well, I'm uh, impressed with the degree of intellectual involvement. Um, and I'm, I'm also surprised that there's such ignorance as to that information. The University of California Press published Hizmet Means Service. And I find that that is what people generally do not understand. As a matter of fact, I find the very glib press, the media in the United States, almost uh, commenting that, uh, commenting that uh, the Hizmet movement is a kind of cult. Well, it does not strike me as a cult any more than, say, the Southern Christian Fellowship is a cult of Martin Luther King. I find that incredibly offensive to my intelligence when I hear that nonsense, even though I've heard it on some uh, rather impressive media sources like the New Yorker. And that silly article that that uh, tourist Dexter Filkin wrote about uh, the situation in, in uh, Turkey and, uh, and the movement. So I, I find that um, if people would, would stop and read some of the books, I've written a book uh, entitled um, uh, Fatou Gulen's Dialogue and Education, A Caravanassery of Ideas. P.J. Uh, uh, Carroll's wonderful book, uh, 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 there are several, uh, uh, Jim Harrington's book. Um, these are fine scholarly works that are not like these rather utterances in the press that is simply trying to capture breaking news and not giving the kind of historical perspective. And that's what I found in the conferences. I found people 
uh, and I've been to many conferences. I've held two, two national conferences, one in San Francisco and one at Berkeley on film for three weeks. Um, I, uh, I find that, that when all of the conference going I go to, we really are all on the same thesis, on the same subject, whether it's the teaching of English, whether it's writing, uh, if it, whether it's film. But when I go to a, a, a Hizmet conference, I find a multitude of people of different interests. And that's why I have found that uh, I have realized one of my vocational missions, and that is bringing students, young students together to share. And uh, the Gulen Institute of Houston, Texas supported a program I had called the Youth Platform. That's a little bit like uh, Enos Cantor's um, uh, uh, International Culture F Festival of Culture and Languages that I attended in, in 2017. These programs address art, uh, philosophy, education, religion, and it is, it is an intellectual inquiry that I find incredibly satisfying more than the kinds of conferences where you're all really basically with the same mission, trying to one up one another. I found the Hizmet conferences fulfilling in creating an engaging community of interfaith thinkers. Great, thank you for this. <clears throat> As you know, uh, the Hizmet uh, people, the followers are facing through very difficult times these years, uh, the last five, six years. Uh, what do you see about this? Uh, what do you see in these net followers in this in these difficult times? And what are, what's your advice? And what's your take on uh, about this purge? Well, I am staggered by what has happened. I, uh, as I said, I've been to Turkey many many times, and uh, I I taught, uh, I lectured at Sabanji University. Uh, in all of these activities, none of them had anything to do with, um, with the Hizmet movement. Um, but I found that uh, Turkey in, from, from about 1985 on was, 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 had, had emerged as one of the most exciting, beautiful, wonderful nations on the, on the face of the earth. And then to see what happened is, is what staggered me as I was staggered about that thought of huddling masses on that pier overlooking the Gibraltar Straits to Morocco. How can it happen here? Well, you know, it nearly happened here a week ago. The fact is that what is going on is, is terribly wretched and Americans should know about the persecution. In one case, uh, in the November following the uh, failed coup, I uh, listened to a, a professor from central Turkey who was speaking at Berkeley and I met him because he was speaking at Stanford and I was gonna be speaking there the following month. That man was taken, he was not a member of Hizmet. He was jailed, he has severe uh, chronic illnesses and uh, I've seen pictures of him since he has been jailed and the picture I have of the two of us I, I'm staggered. I mean, to see and know people who you're talking to one day, all of a sudden, they, their families, their, their children persecuted is something that is not that far from what happened in the 30s. And we should all be alert to it and forget the notion that it can't happen here and go back and read Sinclair's novel, Sinclair Lewis's novel of 1935. Uh, so, based on uh, these experiences, how do you see the future of Hizmet uh, and Hizmet followers in the world, particularly in the United States? That, uh, that's kind of what, uh, I, I, I'm so glad you, you asked that question because it was implicit in really what prompted what I just said. I have, see, I, I ran the uh, youth platform from 2010 to 2015, and then the catastrophe occurred. I really wondered, it would, would Hizmet persist? 
And I am delighted to see the strength of the different dialogue centers and faith interfaith gatherings that continue because the spirit and, and mission of Gulen is being realized and will be realized when he's no longer with us. And I think that that idea is what we so greatly need in terms of the Hizmet's mission as a civic organization, as a social organization that is attuning to the needs of others and finding a reason to act, to help. I think that uh, there are not many, many groups uh, that I know of that is anything quite like it. Thank you. This is uh, these are very insightful, very informative uh, information and knowledge for me and for the whole audience, I believe. So uh, before closing, would you like to add something? I, uh, I have been teaching for a long time and I, uh, I, I just hope that we can continue to not only teach, but to listen. And in that spirit of what I mentioned earlier and what John Paul on Huddle Mass has recently said, to be in, engaged empathetically necessitates listening loudly, listening loudly. Wow. Great. Thank you so much uh, for your time, for your support. Have a good day. Thank you.